today's show people we got a lot to talk about so let's get on to it um the battle to sign Lissandro Martinez is heating up and currently it seems to be neck to neck with Manchester United because of the Ten Hag factor and more currently Arsenal are also inquiring into a deal for Pablo Dybala would you take Dybala at Arsenal also reports coming out that Arsenal have approached uh Lazio's Milinkovic Savage hello Gunners it's Gabby here looking forward to play in front of you guys here Let's go. Finally, Gabriel Jesus has been officially announced by Arsenal Football Club. As you guys can see now, the pictures, the videos, the interviews, and everything else. And we'll be breaking down all of that on today's show. Uh, welcome to Arsenal, Gabriel Jesus, our new number nine. Hopefully, you can bring that Brazilian sauce to the Emirates. Let's go, people. Yo, 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 people, I got a special one for you guys today. I got a special one. This is a live stream. Literally, me and my guy here together. What are you saying, Gunnar King? Jeez. We got my boy Chris yeah, here. Man. How's yeah. everybody doing today? This is a special live one. Hope all man. you guys are good. Let me know how you guys are doing. Gunnar King came over to the house to come chill. Yeah, and we're gonna be and we're gonna be doing a live stream for you guys, talking about everything Arsenal, as you guys already know what it is. Um, by the way, Gunnar King, how you doing? Yeah, man, all good, man, all good. There good you to go. be good to be live and direct, man. It's good to have yeah. a live stream where we're actually uh, in, in, in the, the same, same room. room. Yeah. Like, yeah. So let's talk about it. Crazy. What are the people saying? Um, Arsenal definitely need a midfielder. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. First things first, let's just get this out of the way. We, there is a lot of speculation going around. There's a lot of rumors going around. There's a lot of hearsay going around until we have concrete evidence that there's that there's a name and an individual that has been arrested, and this is the person that is going to uh, that, that we're going to discuss. Then we'll discuss it. Until then, th at this point, it is just rumors, hearsay, and tabloids BS. And I'm not going to get drawn into that. The, my content is not about speculation. My content is not about what is going on in these players' personal lives. If it is true, first of all, hundred percent, I'll distance myself from that, and I would not have any association with yeah, personal man, look, and we're, that. We're not going to defend any player here that's involved in stuff like this. We're not trying to defend a player here. What we're trying to do is deal on on fact, yeah, not 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 hearsay, not not rumors, yeah. Like we, when when you're talking about things of these natures, you got you got to be like you got to be one hundred percent sure is what we're saying, yeah. So we're gonna wait. Yeah, until we got the information and then we're going to go from there. Boom. So today's going to kind of be like a Q&A type show. So you guys throw in your questions as we go along. Hence the Q&A portion right here. And also we're going to discuss the two big transfer stories of today's uh, of today's story. The two stories are supposedly Arsenal made a bid for Milinkovic Savage. And supposedly Yuri Telemans is the, the main target that we're going to be going for. Fabrizio Romano even reported, if you guys haven't already seen... I tweeted it out on my on my Twitter page. Fabrizio Romano tweeted uh, reported that Arsenal are seriously considering um, uh, Yuri Tillemans as the main priority signing and weighing their options. But Milinkovic Savage does seem to be another option that the club is looking at at this moment in time. So just to show you guys what that says, I'm just going to put this up on the screen quickly. So yeah, so as you guys can see, that's what it says right there. I don't know how. Oh, Gunnar King, your face is covered up. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We got you. So, yeah, this is what it's saying right there. Arsenal are weighing up the possibilities of signing Leicester midfielder Yuri Tillemans and more than uh, more like, more than uh, currently Milinkovic Savage. But there is rumors that Arsenal are seriously still considering going for Milinkovic Savage. I've seen reports yesterday that um, Arsenal have identified Milinkovic Savage as a possible midfield target. As you can see right here, this is what this said. Arsenal have identified Lazio's Milinkovic Savage as a, the latest transfer target after signing Gabriel Jesus. But face competition from Newcastle, Lazio want around 60 million and could sell him, uh, could sell for less than that. Mm. We'll have to wait and see. Personally, I say a cheeky bid with Lucas Torreira plus cash gets it done. But I don't, yeah. think, I don't think we're, I don't think we're gonna go in for Yuri Tillemans, and and Milinkovic Savage. I think we're gonna go for Tillemans, and if we can't get Tillemans, maybe we'll go for Milinkovic Savage. I don't know. I don't I, know what the plan is. I mean, but... it's, like Tillemans is just there to be done, isn't it? Like, look, the guy's 
on a year on his contract, personal terms are agreed. Apparently, you know, like they won't be an issue either or however you want to look at that. But ultimately, you know, I think it's, we, we haven't gone in for him. We haven't just finished the job, you know, and I think it's interesting. I understood it when we were going for like attacking targets, you know, like because it was like if we didn't have a midfielder, we have midfielders like Vieira, like Odegaard, like um, El Nenny, like Xhaka, like uh, Partey, you know, like, so we have a lot of central midfield options, but obviously in the attacking areas, we we had an Nketiah. So I understood it when we were like pursuing Jesus, because it was like, look, we're, we're concentrating on that and then we'll come back to the Tielemans still. But um, there seems to be a bit of um and ah in with Tielemans. And I think, I think part of it might be Leicester's valuation. They they might be holding out for a fee that we don't want to pay. You know, you, we know what Arsenal are like. You know, we 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 don't want to be bullied in the transfer market. So we we might be holding out to pay a lower fee because we might be saying, look, you've only got he's only got a year on his contract. We'll come around in a year's time and take him for nothing unless unless you take X. And Leicester are probably saying we want Y. So that I think there's an element of brinkmanship here. Sometimes you make a bid for another midfielder to show the club, look, you know what, you're trying to take the mick with the price. So. We're just going to move on, yeah? So I think there might be an element of that to the Savage deal. Also, the Italian media, what they like to do is they like to link English clubs with players, you know, like agents, you know, to drive up the the price and the valuation and spark bidding wars of their own in their own country. So there, there's all kinds of things that could be at play here with both stories. But I feel that we're definitely going to get one for mm. sure. Uh, people people keep asking about the party thing. I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to speak on it until I have all the concrete information. So if you can please keep it on football, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, all day, every day, Savage over Tillemans. I think we both agree at this moment in time, I think the club is looking at uh, Yuri Tillemans for so long, they're not going to just go and pick up Savage. No, I think, I think yeah. like They might look at both. You don't know. They might look at both because they, they're yeah, not... I would need both. I think we would need both. To be honest, they're not They're not entirely 100% the same midfielder, you know, like in terms of their profile, you know, like they both have box-to-box -box capabilities. But um, I'd say Savage offers way more of a goal for it. Um, you know, he, he likes to get in the box a lot more than Tielemans. He's... he's very good in the air as well, um, with both of his feet. Um, you know, I think he strikes me as more of an all-action midfielder, like, but but one that can create final actions, you know, like with with goal scoring uh and telling contributions with assists, you know, like telling passes into the box for the final ball. Tielemann strikes me as someone that sits a bit deeper, you know, like the that's more of a a continuation kind of playmaker you know like the that helps you kind of keep possession from them deep areas will be dropping deep just in front of the defense picking up the ball driving it into midfield you know like passing the ball forward from those deeper areas and just generally helping you like keep possession in, in the let, deep me, let pockets, me let me let me say this let me say this quickly um to everyone in the chat would you take would you take would you would you still want granite jacket here if we were to get tillemans or would you try to move him on because people are saying you can play Lokonga in that backup eight role. Mm -hmm. You can play Partey in that role, of course, as mm -hmm. long as this whole... Honestly, you can't even address Partey in this video. It's annoying. Yeah. Um, we, there's, so much, there's so much uncertainty in that midfield right now, especially with um, the links to Tillemans, Xhaka possibly being sold. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen with the whole situation over there. So overall... It could be a situation where it's like we might go I, for both. Adidas has unfollowed party on all platforms. Yeah. We don't know, man. I listen. At the end of the day, we have to wait for more information to come out. Everybody keeps talking about the party thing. Mm. Can we please get on to something else? Um, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about this. As a United fan, I'm telling you, Xhaka is terrible. 100% move him on. I mean, I don't think he was bad towards the end of the season. Would you sell him though? For an upgrade, yeah. How much would you sell him for? How much would we get for Granit Xhaka right 15, now? 15, 20 million. 15, 20 million for one of our best midfielders. Absolutely. He's only got two years on his contract. We just gave him a new contract last year. What are you yeah, talking but, about? But we only extended it by a year. So what we did, yeah, is like he had he had a two years and it would have been a year at the end of this contract. So we ripped up the old one and gave him a three-year contract. So in essence, that's only extended his contract by a year. I would sell him for 25 mil. Or even just give me, just give me. Just give me twenty mil, uh, million pounds and add-ons. I'll take it. I mean, 
you know, anything in that ball. I think we we have to set a precedent. This is a yeah, guy. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but Granit Xhaka starts for Arsenal week in week out last season, mm. every single season, every single game. And if we start selling our starters for that cheap, no, people are going to start taking the mick. No, listen, listen. Like, I think, I think what we got to look at, yeah, is if we can, if we can sell him, if we can sell Ainsley Maitland-Niles, and if we can sell Terraria. Yeah? Now I'm looking at them for yeah, and I'm fa- I'm saying ten to fifteen for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. I'm saying ten. We wanted twelve and a half million, yeah, for Terraria, and I'm looking at fifteen to twenty for Jaco. If we can raise, well, what's that like? Fifty between fifty and sixty million for those three, yeah. Like, well, between 40, 45, 50 million, yeah, for those three, yeah. If we can sell those three, go get Tielemans, pay the difference to get someone like Savage, yeah. Then we've only really spent like twenty-five to thirty million out of our own pocket. Do you get what I'm saying? But we've got two midfielders, got three off of our books. The three that we've got off our books here will be earning more than those two. Let me ask you so this. we've reduced the wage bill and put some of the money towards buying them. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm not really fussed on what we get for one player. I'm fussed on like cumulatively three midfielders. Can we reduce our wage bill, sell them and put some of that proceeds towards buying two? That's interesting. But guys, um, Gunner King, are you Muslim there? Hmm? Are you Muslim? No, no. Okay, uh, guys, let's continue. Um, just before we continue, hit that like button. We only have twenty likes. We have a hundred. We have over a, close to hundred people in the chat already. Not good you enough. guys, you guys could definitely do better than that. Let me know right now. Out of everybody in the Arsenal team, if you could sell three players, who would they be? Because for me, I think everybody has Granit Xhaka on their sell list. I do, but last... I think everybody has Bellerin on their sh- yeah, sell yeah, list. Yeah, absolutely. Leno, Leno. Terrera on their sell list. Yeah. I think everyone has Leno on their sell yeah. list. Bell- um, we said Bellerin. Mari, is he already gone? Pablo Mari on his sell list. Yeah, he's he's training currently with the first team. Yeah, yeah, so he's got to go. There's a lot of players um, that we need to I, I would get rid of Holding. Um, did we say Ainsley made a loss? What? Did we say Ainsley made a loss and Pepe as well? I'd sell those two. Bro. So this is what I'm saying. We've got enough players that we can move we on. We could sell a whole 11. We have a whole 11 of players we could sell. Yeah. So I, so I've... we have a goalkeeper. We have a right back that we could sell. Mm-hmm. Hector Bellerin. We have a left back in Ainsley. Uh, and, uh, we could sell Ainsley. We have two center backs that we could sell in Holding and Pablo Mar- Mari. Mar- yeah. Midfield, we have Torreira, Xhaka, and somebody else. Ainsley made the loss. Ainsley made the loss. You, you've got Pepe. You have Pepe on the right. Who's the striker that we could sell? I mean, you got like Nelson. Maybe we Nelson, can, I think we Nelson, can sell him, you can on, the put him on the left. The only thing we need to sell, yeah, is a striker. That's Tim We Reyes. have a starting 11 of, of we have players. We have a starting 11 of players that we need to just dash. Yeah, get rid of them. They're not good enough. Like, I'm sorry, man. Although I love he, Nelson, by the way. Yeah, I think I think he did all right on loan last Cedric, season. Cedric, Cedric also. Cedric, yeah, I'll get rid of him as well. There you go. We, we, we'll play Cedric up front. There you go. 11 players, yeah. Look at I, this. I'll just get rid of them, yeah, and just. I've said it. We I feel we can raise sixty million for those players. I, I'm not asking. Wait, wait, for a lot wait, of wait, 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 wait. Would you sell Kieran Tierney? My no. man saying sell Tierney. Get out of here. Is no, he... but I hear the logic though. Listen no, to this. No, no, no. Listen to the logic. He hasn't been reliable the last two seasons. He's had injury problems. Constantly injured. He's if he's not reliable to stay fit for a whole season. I understand why no, people but, say. But if I... if fifty million was offered, like like supposedly Real Madrid and 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 Newcastle were offering. Would you take 50 million from Newcastle right now for no, Kieran Tierney? They have to be six. I would take it. They have to be six or seven. Why? Because he's pr- he's decent, right? So this is what this is the problem with Tierney. Yeah? Tierney, Tierney. Would you yeah? sell but Kieran listen, Tierney, listen, guys? Listen, would yeah. you sell Kieran Tierney? Tierney, yeah? Tierney, yeah? because we the cover has been so poor. Yeah, we always rush him back. Mm. We never give him. You see, like Martinelli, yeah, when we finish eighth, mm. yeah, everyone was like, oh, he's not playing Martinelli. He's got a massive agenda against him. Uh, Arteta doesn't like Martinelli and I said no look what have we got to play for realistically the, the, the best we can do is finish sixth yeah so so why is he going to risk him for a sixth place finish yeah because he had broken down from from injuries from uh, previously doing him um, you know I think it was his cruciate ligament yeah so I think I think what he said yeah is allow it I'm not going to play him yeah for the whole end part of this season yeah and that's why last season he came back fully fit he came back fresh yeah and Martinelli managed. He looked tired. Okay, what looked, about wait, wait, this sorry, scenario? Wait, wait, what wait, about wait, this sorry, scenario? Sorry, sorry, wait, 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 wait. Let me just finish this. Yeah, he looked tired. Yeah, he looked tired at the end of the season. But Martinelli made it a whole season. Yeah, 
And that's what I'm saying. That little bit of rest, yeah, at the end of the previous season where he wasn't needed, we got to treat Tierney like this more. Bro, we keep rushing him I back. I hear man. you. I hear you. I was just playing devil advocate here. I, know, I hear that. But, but my guy's saying, if you can get a Cucurella in. No. And sell a Tierney for like 50 mil. Cucurella is not better than Tierney. I'm sorry. Let's not let's not let's not do this recency bias thing, man. Tierney was captain in Celtic at 17 years old, my my guy. 17 years old, a big Scottish club like Celtic, yeah, wearing the let armband. Me know, guys. He's captain Scotland, yeah. And look at when when he plays for us, when he is fit, he's a he's a top baller, right? So what we need is credible competition and cover for that position, yeah. And we need to say, all right, he might not ever stay fit for 30 games a season, but let's get what we get out of him and get someone else that when they come in, the standard doesn't drop. That's what okay. we need to do. Another, another rumour we, we have to, to put that. to bed. Uh, people keep thinking I live in Canada, bro. Are we in Canada right now? We're in the UK, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I'm in the UK. So yeah, I don't live in Canada, man. Um, we don't sell Karen Tierney. Um, how about this? Do we need another striker or a, a, a versatile winger? Because I put in the chat, I put a question in the chat. And as you can see, 68% are currently saying they would rather sign a versatile winger. Would you rather sign, would, would you would you rather Arsenal sign a striker or a versatile winger? A striker. I, I'm with the versatile winger. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, you uh, make your case. Personally, I think we need both. I think we need both. You'd agree. Am I wrong? I think we need both. I'm, I, don't, I don't think we need both. I think we need both. But at I'm, the same time, I'm at gonna, the same time, I'm more leaning towards side of the versatile winger. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, yeah. So right. So on the left hand side, yeah, you've got Martinelli, you've got Smith Rowe that can play there, you've got um Vieira that can play on both sides, and you've got Marquinhos that can play on both sides, and you've got Jesus that can play across the three. Yeah. So I've just named five people potentially in our squad that can play on the left. Now on the right. Again, Marquinhos can play there. Jesus, in fact, I didn't even name Saka, did I? So that's no, six. Yeah. yeah, that's six. Yeah, and then on the other side, you've got Saka, Odegaard, who has played wide right as an inverted winger. You've got Pepe. Yeah, you've got Marquinhos. You've got Jesus that can play across the line again. So that's five options. So in terms of like a wide option, you've got Vieira as well. Yeah, so. In terms of having a striker, like a profile of, of a proper number nine, I'm talking like a I'm talking like a, a Benzema, I'm talking like a Lewandowski, someone that someone that has the those leading line qualities, you know, that has that bit of physicality, that edge, uh aerial. So ability, are you not happy with Gabriel presence. Jesus? No, I'm I'm, I'm current. Ha- no, no, I'm happy. I'm happy, but what I'm saying is like you need different profiles of strikers, yeah. So you got when you come up and face up against different defenses. You need you need more than one ways to skin a cat with your striker. Do okay. you get what I mean? Let me, yeah. I, let me ask the people, because we are talking to people. You just heard his case. Do you still think a striker is more important or a versatile wing is more important? Because I think a versatile wing is more important because we currently don't have enough quality cover for Bukayo Saka on that right flank. I mean, Jesus played on the right. Jesus can play on the right, but, I, but I'm more or less thinking him and Eddie and Ketty are going to be rotating in the striker position and Saka still will need somebody even, to be rotating even, in on that right flank. Even in that in itself, yeah, I've just named five players that can rotate on the left, five that can rotate on the Who right. Who are the five and, that can play on the right? And we won't, so, yeah, like Saka, Saka Martinelli... Pepe, Pepe. No, 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 Saka, Pepe. Pepe. Pepe's not good enough. No, no, but I'm just saying, yeah, like just in our squad at the moment, yeah. So we've got Saka, we've got Pepe, we've got Marquinhos, we've got Odegaard. Marquinhos and, and is we... not going to be a first team player right now for me. Listen, he's been training with the first team, and I've been seeing today, yeah, that they are they're not loaning him out, bro. They are keeping him. I don't know. In the squad. They we'll are, have to see. They're keeping him in the squad we'll for Europa see. League, yeah. He, we'll have to see. Trust me, he's he's gonna stay around, yeah. We'll see. And then you've got Vieira. As well, yeah. So that's five people. No, but yeah. how many of those five do you think will will start on the right flank for Arsenal in the Premier League? Listen, I'm telling you, 100 Saka. Yeah, if we get rid of of Pepe, yeah, I'm happy with the other options. So yeah. you're happy with Martinelli, Gabriel, yeah, look, look, what, what uh, Gabriel Jesus, depth and quality on both sides. We got four or five players, but up front we've only got two. So what does that tell you? That we need a winger. Okay. That's that's why I just I, I don't know that. I, I I'm that's... gonna we're gonna agree to disagree, mm. okay? Because I don't think we're gonna. I think we both agree that the club it would be nice if we got another striker. Yeah, like because because Jesus and Nketiah's profiles 
There, there's no physicality between the two. They're great strikers, don't get me wrong. They're elite, you know, not elite, but they're, they're good finishers once they get in the box. They're, these are their qualities, but you, you sometimes you need, like, I mean, you look at City, they just got Haaland. You look at Liverpool, they just got Nunes. You know, like, you need that. You need that physical profile of striker in the Premier League, I find. Like, and I just think that would add another dimension to our attack. You've got great crossers like Kieran Tierney, Saka, Odegaard when he drifts out wide, when he's crossing the ball into the box. These guys, Martinelli, when he crosses, when he inverts on his right foot and crosses inside. Um, Smith Rowe, when he crosses from the left-hand channel, um, when he inverts from that side. We don't, like, against Tottenham, the season before last, when we lost... 2-0 away from home. In the second half, Arteta came out in his post-match interview and he was like, well, we really tried to get an equaliser. We put 26 crosses into the box in the second half alone, yeah? And we but, didn't but, have nobody. A bo- a Oba and Lacazette, between them, barely hit double digits of goals scored with the head in their whole time at Arsenal. So what good is it spamming pot crosses in the box? Gabriel Jesus is good with his head, though. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not, it's not something that we would say is his redeeming quality. Like, it's not his... Possibly, yeah. I think, for me, like, his movement off the ball and his footwork, yeah, like, and these are, like, his strengths. You know, like, I wouldn't say winning balls in the air, in the box, okay. is really what he's about. We need an Ibrahimovic style, man. That is the sort of profile. Ibrahimovic, Drogba, these kinds of men. You know what I mean? Like, Ivan Tony's, like, right. these kinds of men. Gunnar King like, is right. We need a proper number nine. You know what? I think... We're already making complaints about what we need for next season uh, before we even get started. It's kind of crazy, uh, but yeah, let's 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 go on to S, uh, SMS. Uh, can score with his head. Who's SMS? Yeah, who's SMS? I'm so confused. Okay, uh, moving on, um, guys. So the Sandro Martinez thing. Reports coming out that Lissandro Martinez will more, more or less likely be a Manchester United player come the end of the week. Mark Ogden from ESPN reporting that Manchester United are looking to wrap up this deal up before the end of the week. Other, other reports also coming out from Manchester United reporters that Lissandro Martinez is going to be coming at the end of the week. So is it a big blow that Arsenal are missing out on Lissandro Martinez? Or do you think do you think um, this deal will still possibly happen even though Manchester United are serious about this deal? I don't think it's over. And look, you got to look at it two ways. It's never nice, yeah, to lose out on a player. That he's good. He's a good player. I've watched him, yeah. Like, very good on the ball. Um, very comfortable. Very press resistant. Can carry the ball out from defence. Can pass the ball out from defence. For someone that's 5'9", five, 5'10", five, he, he's got a decent spring on him. Fairly good in the air. Very tenacious in the tackle. Has already captained Argentina. Um, and he's 24. Um, three years in Ten Hag's possession-based system, he would definitely suit our system. But Arsenal fans, Arsenal fans, please, I love you. Yeah, we all we all love this club. Yeah, but going on Twitter, you hurt me sometimes now. Yeah. Why? What did they do? There's the meltdowns. Oh my god, we didn't get our number one target. What is this club doing? We lost out on this player. Like, chill. Yeah. It's literally a chill thing because I'm I'm chill yeah. personally. I knew that uh, uh, going in for Rafinha, we had, there was a good odds of Barcelona stealing him or somebody yeah, else stealing 100%. him. I knew going in for Lissandro Martinez, the moment I seen that they are not going to sell both him and Timber, mm. I'm like, Damn. red flags. Because yeah. cause the moment Manchester United's number one target was Timber. Mm. They didn't get Timber. Now they're going to go for Lissandro Martinez. Now, call this backtracking, call this backpedaling, whatever you want. You know he doesn't really play much as a left back. Yeah, no, no. He plays Majority of his career, he plays as a centre-back. Center back, yeah. So, yeah. you're telling me we're spending £45 million on a backup to Gabriel Magalhães? The thing is, no, I don't, I don't necessarily think he'll... I think he'll be credible competition. And I also think that he would also compete for Tierney's space as well. So, he would be on, he would be on both their toes. And, like, obviously, if Tierney gets injured, he would have got a lot of games at left-back as well. And also, you see, you see he's more defensive, yeah? You see Tomiyasu, who's defensive on the other side, when our system reverts to three at the back because the fullback goes forward, I think he would have done the same on the other side. So he would have inverted to make it a three. Why is Prime laughing? He, he would have inverted to make it a three whilst um, maybe a Cedric or a more attacking right back got forward on the other side. What about Patrick Schick? Would you take Patrick Schick? He's just renewed his contract. 
Yeah, he's going to cost a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, he's just renewed his contract. Arsenal linked to with Gamardo if Lissandro Martinez does not happen. You know what I don't get about that? Mm. We went to Benfica and we came back with Tavares. Now we're going to go back to them just to get Gamardo? It's kind of like, why didn't we get him in the first, first place? First place, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. Like, don't you guys agree? It's like, we're going to Benfica to buy a left back. We come back with Tavares. Now we find out Tavares is not good enough. We're going to sell him and we're going to go back to the same club to get another backup left back. I feel, I feel not good enough is a bit harsh. I think like maybe not ready. Like, I think he was thrown in. I think he was cast to the wolves a bit last season. Like when you're, when you're talking about bringing young players into your team, yeah, and your senior players are dead and they're letting you down, yeah, and like... You know, like in the first half of the season when Tierney got injured, but but like there was more, like Oba was still there, Laka was still there, Xhaka and Party was still there. And like there wasn't as much pressure on those games. I thought he did very well. I, I hear thought that. Because I, I went to some of those home games, the Watford game, the Palace game. He was excellent in those games, yeah. Bro, but I think, talk to I think, the people, man. Tell but them. Think, but I think what happened, yeah, was when, when Tierney got injured and Party got injured after the international break, and then he's like, it's like a short notice. It's like, you're going to that first team. And if we don't win against Palace, Tottenham are taking four for us. Yo, they're saying he reminds me of Monreal. A, a lot more pressure. Monreal was decent. Mon- Monreal was Mon- one of Mon- our was... best left backs in the Emirates era. Mon- Monreal was good, man. The disrespect. Would he start in your best left back in the Emirates era? Absolutely. He would be up. He would be amongst them in the Emirates era. Definitely. Era. Definitely. Um, Iga uh, ha- has been much calmer this transfer window. You know what it is, man? There's no need for me to go crazy, go, ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's whatever. We've been uh, there and done that last season. Listen to this. Uh, Billy's saying, Iga, next time you're on the on stream with uh, Tom Little, tell him to check his facts first. We never were uh, in for Basuma or Hik- and Hickey. You know what? I did tell him to check his facts, but you know what? Banter, brand, banter is banter. Yeah. People probably, people yeah. on TikTok messaging me saying, haha, you missed out on Hickey. You can't banter somebody for missing out on a player to Brentford because if Arsenal seriously went in for that player, you think he's going to Brentford? No, he's not. But the thing is, look, you got to think, right? Hickey's 19, yeah? At 19, you're a fullback. You've just played 36 games, yeah? In Serie A last season. A big, a big European league. One of the top five, yeah? So, for him to come now, it's going to be a situation where he's only playing if Tierney's not fit. And we would like to envisage T- Tierney being fit for the whole season. Obviously, we know that's not going to happen. Spoiler alert, that's not going to happen. Tierney's going to get injured at some point. <laughs> you don't we, have we to say it. spoiler like, alert. Yeah, like, we get bored of it. We know it's going to happen, yeah. But but for a, for a 19-year-old to sit there and wait for that to happen, he's stagnating. He needs to be like he needs to be playing game in, game out. At Similar this, to Darwin Nunes going yeah, to United at this stage of his instead career. Of Liverpool. Yeah, he needs to be playing at this stage of his career, game in, game out. Because if you don't do that between the ages of like 19 and 24, 25, when you're a defensive player, your your career will regress, like your ability will regress, you will plateau, you won't you won't hit the, the peak of your potential and your powers. So was it a good move for him? Was it a good move for Arsenal? Arsenal, we know, is an inexperienced squad. We've been crying out to bring more experience in. So for, for all parties involved, is it a 100% fit? You got us like you got, when you use your brain, use your brain. Just one second, bro. Uh, how how can you miss out on a player you did not bid for? This is what I mean. Yeah. Like, can we make fun of Tottenham for missing out on J- Jesus when they didn't bid? I mean, they did kind of make an approach for him, but yeah, I get what you're saying, isn't it? Do you see? Do you see people making fun of? Do you see people making fun of Chelsea for missing out on Jesus? No, I mean, like it's it's the thing is, look, we all do it. It's banter, it's funny, and all that, yeah. But to be honest, yeah, I, I said it. You, you was you was with me on Terry's um on his. You can um, make fun of us for Rafinha on his space that's, on his, on his Twitter space yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, the reality is, Arsenal United are not where we need to be. We're trying to get to where we need to be. And in order to get to where we need to be, we need to bring in good players. This is a good now, one. In order to bring in good players, you have to target good players on the market. And guess what? If you're good at your job, yeah, I know what job I do. I know I'm good at it. Yeah, I know I could put my CV out tomorrow and about 10 people are going to be calling me, <laughs> trying to hire me. Yeah? Yeah, so quick commodity. Th- this is the thing. Yeah, like if you're a player that is good, you're going to be in demand. Yeah, so Facts. like I would rather our club is going for good players and a byproduct of that being other teams are going in for him and we win some and we lose some, but we live. Yeah. Let's talk about a good player that I'm we already, let's talk about a good player we already have in our ranks. 
William Saliba. Now, if William Saliba was in the open market today, I don't have any question. This is easily a player that's going for 50 to 80 mil. Don't you agree? I mean, you know, I've watched him. I watched him at Marseille last season. Even Saint Etienne, you know, the season before with Fofana, he was doing bits, man. He's, he looks, he looks quality, man. He looks quality. Um, yeah, he looks absolutely quality. Um, I think, yeah, with the with with the right coaching, uh, the right game time, I think maybe he could fight and win, um, competing with Ben White for his spot this season. It's good competition to have. We're back in Europe now, so we're going to get a proper look at him. I think in pre-season, he will definitely start the games. You know, we he will be the defender we are looking at in pre-season. I don't think we'll be playing Ben White. Or it will either be Ben White or Gabriel that's made to sit out so we can get a proper look at him. I'm just going to say this. William Saliba last season was the uh, played the most minutes out of any youngster his age group. I think he's a top, top young centre-back. And... I am not going to put too much pressure on him, but there's already so much pressure because he's been so hyped mm. by, by world football and everybody else. So, every, so <laughs> everybody, everybody's going to want Saliba to fail. Everyone's going to want Saliba to make a mistake. He's still very young. He's still going to make mistakes. He's a center back coming to the Premier League uh, with high ratings. He's more, he's at this moment in time, I would say he's more highly rated than Jules Kunde. He's more highly, he's more highly rated than all these center backs bar what? Uh, Kanate, or you could even he, say, I mean, he's up there with those guys. So, yeah, so let's not let's dis, not. He's displaced a lot of people in the French squad. Right? Yeah, I mean, let's not us. underestimate how difficult it is to get into that French team. And it, come January, if he's on that uh, that that plane to the World Cup in Qatar, big up to him. I, I would like to see him on that on that plane to Qatar. I think we need to renew his contract this summer as well. Uh, people saying, why not Reese Nelson? Listen, I, I like Reese. I think he did all right on loan last season but for me I feel like I feel I don't feel again I feel he's in the same boat that I was just describing with Hickey I feel like for him to take his game to the next level now we would need to play him like first team like we would need to just play him for seven or eight games is he better than Martinelli does he look better than ESR to me at the moment does he look better than Saka Odegaard in the centre like I'm not looking at any of these players and, and and seeing that quality. So I just think I think I think it's time to just let him go for the for, for his good as well, man. He's there an academy go. product. I want to see him have a good career. If it's not with us, it's got to be with someone else, right? Personally, I'm just gonna keep this one short and sweet. Reese Nelson, we should sell him. Uh, if Feyenoord want another loan. And, and and that is feasible for the club. I would loan him out again if he can't get us sold. But personally, I would try to sell him as much as possible. Mm. Um, let me know, guys, what you guys, uh, any questions you guys have in the chat if you're, if you're here new. And make sure you hit that like button. We're at currently around 60 likes. You can do much, much better than that. So take a second, stop whatever you're doing. Smash those stop likes. it and hit that like Smash button right those now. Likes, man. Um, we got big, big collab right here. Um, what are the people saying? Higher... What is this guy smoking? He is more. He's he's higher. Really, he's rated higher than Jules Kunde right now. I mean, boy, they I mean, Kunde is Kunde is doing bits. But he's, he's starting over bits. Kunde in in the French team. He is in the French team. I mean, like, I'm always careful with like being picked for like the international squad, like because you know, like sometimes it's down to like the manager's system. Do you know what I mean? Like, but he's definitely in that in he's in that bracket of French up and coming centre backs. You know what Ronaldo. I mean? Like, Hmm. These guys are. I would say. I would say Kunde is like further in his development at the moment, but like in the crop of up and coming top French defenders, he's in that group. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, like so. Yeah, Kunde's obviously got more experience. Um, you know, and I would say is yeah, definitely at a more developed stage of his career. But yeah, like you know, there's there's a big group of like France are just brimming with talent. Brimming with talent. Uh, Jules Kunde wasn't that good this season. Well, there you uh, go. I mean. ja ja Black, Black Jacket in the house, uh, 644 in the house saying big up. Uh, you got big ups. Big up to you guys too, man. What are we saying about Ronaldo, man? I know this is not... Would you take Ronaldo at Arsenal? Nope. 
<laughs> no, sir. I know he wouldn't join no, Arsenal. No, sir. I know he wouldn't join us, but still. Like, oh, no. everybody's talking about Ronaldo. You know, Pierce Morgan, he did a whole uh, documentary on, on why Ronaldo should come to Arsenal. This guy, man. Yeah, no, Piers, sorry, man. I just, I don't claim it. Piers Morgan. We do, Think about it, yeah? Our system, a high press, yeah? We need... We need a pressing forward that we've got in Jesus. Like it is a prerequisite of any of our front players. Look at that when guys. we don't have the ball, that they are able to get into the faces of defenders and win that ball back. They're smart. They're trying to get us to talk about it without talking about it. Okay, let me talk about Chris Wheatley. No, Chris Wheatley, you shouldn't be tweeting stuff. And uh, if you're not hundred percent sure, that's 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 all I gotta say. Like he's a cool guy, Chris Wheatley. Probably made an honest mistake, but you shouldn't be tweeting about stuff like this. Unless you're a hundred percent sure, hundred percent, man. That's why I've not made it. I've not made a single post. I've not made a single tweet. People have been inboxing me and asking for me to comment. I will not comment until until what I'm commenting on is not speculative. And as I said, yeah, that that was all I really wanted to say on the matter because, um, mate, people's livelihoods are at stake, man. Take this one. You know, like put it in there. we're just putting. Yeah, like they are. They are at stake, man. And these are serious allegations, man. So you just, you got to make sure, man. And if it is, as I said, make no mistake, if it's an Arsenal player, then I, they, they should be an Arsenal player no more. That is the way I see it. I will never defend anyone, yeah, doing this sort of stuff. You know, like, you know, I don't want to get into what happened with, with Greenwood at United and a lot of people with this innocent until proven guilty stuff. We're not talking about a tape floating around where... It's obvious with, you know, so I, I just want to wait. I, I want to see, like, you know, I want to be sure of these things. Man. Prime's a United fan. He said, take him. He will crush your waist structure. Well, yeah, that, that won't be the only thing he'll crush. It'll be the dressing. I, I, I think Ronaldo's a great player. I love he is Ronaldo. a great player. I love him. I would love I love to him. see him at Bayern Munich, prolonging his career, winning Champions Listen, Leagues, no. winning leagues. I love He's going to do great at yeah. Bayern Munich. He I think he should go Bayern. back to Real Madrid, personally. I think he should go to Bayern. Because if he then Real Madrid don't need him, they want a Champions League without him. He comes back. What are they going to do? Yeah, but it I mean, could get worse. He's he's his his history with that club. You know the attachment he has with it. You know I think the circumstance he left in. You know like, do you I think, think any of our links has anything to do with this controversy? Because I don't think so at all. No, I don't think it does. To be honest, yeah. as I said, I think it's more like the brinkmanship of our negotiation with Leicester. We're being like Leicester are trying to dictate what we're trying to pay for them. So we're just gonna try and we're gonna try and show them levels in how we negotiate by going for an next midfielder. So then they'll feel like fuck, we missed out, yeah. So if we went back in, then we're like, right, look, we got this offer on the table now. We could just go get this man. Hmm. So if you don't, if you don't accept this bid, we're gonna go get this man. Okay. You know, and that gives you a like a position of strength in negotiation. Okay, let's see what's going on with Arsenal. Um, Gabriel Jesus, obviously, welcome to Arsenal. We haven't spoken about that. Welcome to Gabriel Jesus. I Jeez. Think, I think he's going to do bits at the Emirates, honestly. I really do. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Um, Fabrizio Romano speaking about Maya. What? What's going on here? My man's moving mad. Hmm. Okay. Um, pr Premier League, all Brazilian 11. <laughs> you notice how Richarlison's not in there. Oh, yeah. What a surprise. Yeah, they did a Premier League of Brazilian oh, don't, 11. Don't, don't, don't let Jordan see that after the debate we had yesterday. Let me show you. Because he'll, he'll, he'll be telling me all about how Gabriel Jesus underperformed uh, relative to his XG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and trying to build some case about how fucking, how Richarlison should be in there. He said, get out of here, man. All Brazilian, Mad luck, George, yeah, but all Brazilian Premier League 11. And I don't see one Gabriel Jesus. Do I see Gabriel Jesus? Do we see any Tottenham players full stop? Ooh. No, these mm. no. Mm. You know why Gabriel Jesus is in there though, right? Because because when it comes to goal scored, he he's like one of the top goal scoring Brazilians of all time. He's he's league. like his conversion rate is in the top seven, yeah, of of minutes played, yeah, to to goal scored, I believe. Yeah, he's up there. He's definitely yeah. up there. He's one of the top guys, and and, and his numbers are his numbers are to show for him, man. Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Jesus, guys, we, we underestimate how good of a footballer he actually is. Once he comes here and we see him play week in, week out, we're going to then understand how good he actually is. Mm. I think people are underestimating how good he is at this moment in time. Uh, somebody asked me for the league code for um, fantasy. I'll give you that right now. I'll just Drop put that, that in the chat, guys. I just put that in the chat right there. This Hit the, the likes, this, man. This is the league code for the fantasy. Um, what else is there that we could... This is what I tend to do. I just at some point just look around... 
what else do we got? Oh, uh, this is a cool picture. This it is, cool picture. is sick, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna just, I'll show everybody what's relevant. Um, oh, this one's relevant. Pedro Neto. Oh, this is a player I like. Pedro this, Neto. This is a player. So I like Pedro very Neto. Much. If you were, if we if we were talking about getting a winger, I'd, I'd take him. I would take him. I want to see if there's any links. So four days there ago, are, I've seen some. Four days ago. Not very, not very concrete ones. Not but. very concrete, but still, uh, links, links to say the least. Um, so let's just let's just look at this. This is what, uh, this is what this link says. We and tried to buy him, yeah. When Venn interesting, was interesting, interesting, interesting rumor right here. Would you guys take Pedro Neto? I I love the guy, man. I think he's a baller. Arsenal fan, uh, Arsenal fans. Pedro Neto is the perfect Rafinha alternative. Yeah. Uh, uh, after Agreed. failing thirteen million pound transfer, wait, Pedro Neto failed a thirteen million pound transfer. No, this was when Wenger was there, so we tried to sign him, and they wanted like eighteen million. Say where? So yeah, yeah, we 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 lowballed. I don't see anything about it actually saying Pedro Neto is available. Uh, is I, I definitely think Wolves would sell him for the right plus. So this is an opinion piece. This is not actually like... No, yeah, yeah. It's not like... It's not actual uh, real concrete. Mm. Would you guys take Pedro Neto? Does he play on the left, though? He can play on both sides. He can play on both sides. He can play even in the centre if you want, running through the middle. I'd even, yeah, I'd even do that as a 10 or a second striker as well. Mm. He's, pretty, he's very versatile, man. Would you guys take Pedro Neto? And how much would he cost? 40, 50? I think so. I think that'll do it. I think he would cost around the same as... They'll try to rip us off like... No, like, but you see like what they did with Jota, though? They would spread it, like, over, like, the life like, of the contract. Like, it would, we wouldn't pay that much up front, I don't think. Am I wrong? But aren't majority of transfers done this way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, go, to, they go to an external uh, company to give them the money up front, and they pay that company as the other club has already received their funds. With, with a lower rate of interest, yeah. Yeah. Correct. So That's all like, transfers are done in some like sort of many, installments. Yeah, like many with, uh, like, yeah, it's like bridging finance. Yeah. Essentially. You know what? Majority of people don't realize that. Uh, how long has he got in his contract? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Um, Let me check. Pedro Neto. I think Pedro Neto's got a couple of years left at least on his I contract. I think so, yeah. But I definitely, I definitely really like Neto. I really like that. Pedro Neto's got... Wow! 2027! Oh, he's costing bucks. Pedro Neto's under contract until 2027! Bro, Bro they, they got him on a death row contract. Yeah, man. They're going to bump that. That'll be like... Shit. That'll be like 40 to 50 million. Yo, they're moving like Sugar Knight on here. What the fuck? Mm. Oh, damn. That's what the process is called. The monetization. It's called the monetization. What is that? The, the, the financial process whereby, like... It's called a bridge... Yeah, so like bridging finance, yeah, is where you want to buy something, but you don't have the, the readies up front. So you would take a loan to front the upfront purchase, and then and then essentially you would pay that back when you can, either in installments or in a one-off payment or whatever, yeah. Um, with a rate of interest, obviously, that that person like what about what about the object? it's kind of like the Klarna Bank finance aspect, yeah, of Buying players, yeah. There's this guy, yeah, Remedy, yeah. Obviously, you yeah, know, yeah, him, yeah, yeah. He spoke yeah, about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Big him up, man. He like, spoke about yeah, it. He broke it down nicely because he works in finance as well, bro. He knows his stuff, yeah. And he he knocks around on TikTok and YouTube as well. Check him out. Um, and yeah, like, um, yeah, that's that's basically you know how a lot of transfers work. Some people saying they don't think he leaves anytime soon. People are saying run up the likes, people. What are the likes at, people? We, we're almost at 100 likes, guys. Come on. Almost need to get man. there. Come on. And just to let you know, um, it's it's a lot closer now. 70% saying versatile winger. A lot 30% saying striker. So My argument wasn't competitive enough. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Your but argument least, was not. Yeah, what about uh, people saying um, 50 million for Musa Diaby? I think Musi Diaby is a baller. I think he he he's predominantly plays on the right, so he'll be a good signing for us on the right. And he does offer us he does offer us some goals, goal threat, good goal threat. So I don't much think much more of a goal threat. I think. Definitely a good player there. But um, I don't like. I, I only say I think at Palace. Yeah. We have to be careful. Less proven in the Premier League. But... Yeah, you have to be careful when you sign players from Palace because their style of play is nowhere near. Uh, how interested as our style players. You have to see if the player is a good footballer or not because you don't want to have a situation where... I feel like last season, Palace were more possession-based. Wouldn't you era. Wouldn't you rather take the other guy at Palace? What was his name? Former at Eze. Arsenal. Uh, Eze. 
Yeah, former Arsenal Academy player. Yeah. He, he, I would rather have him. I mean, Eze's just returned from a pretty bad injury, so I'd give him a bit more time. But yeah, I'd, guys, I'd, we should have got Eze, Eze yeah, when he um, went. To I didn't Palace say I didn't say he was hundred percent coming to Arsenal. I just said I would like him. Doesn't mean he's gonna come. For God's sakes, I would like freaking uh, some of the best players in the world, like Benzema, to come to Arsenal. Doesn't mean he's coming as a striker. <laughs> Le- yeah, Leverkusen obviously got Champions League football, haven't they? So yeah. Um, what about Savage, Onana, Tillemans, Gakpo, Martinez? Is a dream and to the window. I like Gakpo. Keep dreaming, my guy. Unfortunately, we're not signing all those guys. Gakpo is another guy I like. I've always, oh yeah, I've, I've admired Gakpo. He had a good season. Do you think well. we're going to sign all those players, though? Realistically, Savage, I don't believe we're going to sign Savage, but we're going to have to wait and see. Onana, bro, six foot four, six foot five midfielder. Mm. Absolute beast. I'll take him in a heartbeat. Yuri Telemans, 25 mil, would do. Gakpo, I think Gakpo's headed to Leeds as the Rafinha replacement. No, because they've they've gone for that other guy. Um, they've nearly wrapped up. There was a, there was another very similar guy. Oh, what's his name? He's not PSV. He plays for was it Feyenoord? Uh, Someone's going to put it in the comments in a minute. What he he plays? They, for... They've gone for another. They've gone for another Dutch like kind of. That's the guy. That's the guy. Uh, Sinstra. Yeah. That's who Leeds have gone for. Yeah, they're very close to getting that done. Okay. They're very so that might leave Gakpo available again. Oh, no. to, to be honest, West Ham since bid. since was a baller as well. West you know. Ham bid for Onana also. They bid. They yeah, bid they bid. Million. They bid 15, 20 million. Yeah. Yeah. Onana, that's his name. That joke is always gonna run. <laughs> they have the, they have Declan Rice. Onana, Onana is the name. That is the name. Uh, Final. We... Yeah, he plays for Final. That Sinstra guy, man, he's a problem, bruv. Bro, I would have taken him as well. He wins everything. He covers ground quickly. That that brings me on to my next point. Do we need a DM this this transfer? I've said it all along, man. Even <laughs> even with this party nonsense, like uh, look, I've analyzed the last two seasons, yeah. And for me, I feel like the crucial running at the end of the season, like the season before last, the UEFA Cup semi final, the Europa Cup semi final, yeah, when Papatini was injured, and we were having to play Cedric or whoever as a left back, yeah. And we were playing Xhaka as a left back, yeah. Like that cost us. And then last season it cost us again. And party getting injured cost us again. You know, the season before last, party getting injured before Christmas, yeah. Like, you know, being out for for a minute after the North London derby, that cost us again. So I, I'm seeing these hallmark serialities here, and I'm like, I don't understand for the life of me why we aren't putting additional cover there. I appreciate we've kept. I appreciate that we've kept. Um, we've kept El Nenny. But he's only staying for one season anyway. I'd rather be proactive about getting his replacement now. Do you get what I mean? And then part is 29 and he's injury, he's injury prone. So I would rather bring a six in right now. If you said to me, you can either have Savage and no one else, or you could have Tielemans or a six and a six, I'm taking Tielemans and a six. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like that because Savage has real standout quality. But for me, I'm more about squad balance than quality. Like in certain situations, and so I feel like, feel like I feel you... our midfield needs balance. Like it, it needs balance. Yeah, like when Party is not fit, we do not need to see a drop off. Yeah, in his alternative. Yeah, and and I feel like Tielemans provides an upgrade to Xhaka at the same time. There you go. Like those two game changing elements for me ramp up our midfield more than just getting the quality of Savage basically, and leaving that gap still. Basically. If we don't sign a number six and we just sign one eight, our midfield will still go into next season, depending on El Nene and Lakonga. If we if we do, if we do get if we do get a six like this Onana guy, it will offer us more flexibility. Mm. And he is twenty two years old, absolute beast unit in the midfield. Kind of reminds me of Diaby. Uh, the last time we had a unit like that in the midfield. Who who's predominantly play, who's that tall? Yeah. Like I don't think Pate is even that tall. So it would no, be nice not. to see. But guys, that's it for now. Um, people are saying Sonogo or or Gwede Rodriguez. I don't know. Sangara. Sangara is already gone, isn't he at Leicester? No, I think United are looking at Sangara. Well. Liverpool are also looking at Sangara. I don't a lot, know. A lot of clubs are looking at Sangara. Would be great. He'd be great for our midfield. The Decor- is going to uh, Palace. The Corre we should have got. By the way, you this know what? man gives me Vieira vibes. You know Watch what? him next season. Did, remember that he guy is who gonna, went to Leicester? He's going to have a great season. Remember that guy who went to Leicester, Bubukai Samari? Samori, yeah. He had a terrible season. He did, but we could have done with him as well. 
he had a terrible season. So some did, some man. sometimes when we get these these players come to their prime, the whole we, of everyone hypes them season, up. Man. Everyone I mean? hypes up all these guys and then they play shit. Mm. Um, I don't know, man. Talk to me, people. We're gonna wrap this up, guys. Big up to all you guys watching for the whole time. You're dead tired, bro. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like, yeah, I was. No, I'm all. I'm all good, man. I'm all good. Trust me, man. <laughs> Anyways, people, you guys have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. You already know what it is. Kitty G on EGTV. Great video. We're gonna we'll, do more of these, man. We'll sure. be back tomorrow with more stuff. Obviously, Gunner King will be at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace. People saying Tyler, we should go for Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams going to Leeds, man. He's going to Leeds. Yeah. yeah don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. But yo, people, on the end of the uh, end of the stream, seventy percent of you guys have said versatile winger. We're at 86 likes on the video. Absolute legends. Have yourselves a wonderful day. If you haven't already hit the like button, hit the like button on the way out. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel on the way out. And you guys have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, by the way, there's another Gunner King in the chat. Um, another Gunner King. <laughs> he says... He there says, can only be one Gunner King, my friend. R Ronaldo, received, uh, Ronaldo received Chelsea... And Arsenal offers. We offered for Ronaldo. No, he, he's just nah, trolling. you're trolling, bro. He's just trolling. I was going to say, man. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day, guys. Peace out.